is my second opportunity to be here in South Africa. The first was three years ago, and I loved it, and I, I can't tell you how happy and fortunate I feel to be back. Thank you to all of the sponsors and everyone for giving me the opportunity to be here for the second time. Shall we plan ahead and go for number three? Maybe it depends on how, how you like what we're going to talk about today. Um, bef before, let, let's hop back for a minute. Um, greetings from the Wireless ISP Association in the U.S. Uh, we're the organization that uh, lobbies and advances the cause of the fixed wireless broadband industry. We've got about 600 members, and uh, this is about our sixth or seventh year. I'm kind of, this, the next two slides are really to kind of place a little context on what I'm going to say because I'm kind of an old guy. I've been around for a while. Today, in our laptops here, we've got Wi-Fi chips, which are microwave transceivers. But when I started out in the, as a child in the late 1950s, a microwave transceiver looked like about this. It took up not quite a six-foot-tall relay rack, but an aircraft microwave transceiver was about three feet tall. So times have changed, technology has advanced, and I'm, again, I'm kind of an old-fashioned guy, so I'm kind of a slow adapter. Yet the internet today is in my living room in many ways. I love the internet, most of the things it allows me to do. You know, I'm addicted to email, probably on it more hours of the day than anything else. I've got to know what's going on. It's hard to go to sleep at night because I'm kind of a news junkie and have to read for a couple hours until I can learn something new, one new piece of information that puts everything else in context. So I want the email in my living room via the internet. I want the news in my living room via the internet. Professional collaboration has really, I think, been one of the key values that the internet has delivered. Because I think across every profession and every interest group, if it weren't for the internet, we wouldn't have the benefit of all of the learning within our profession or within our interest group that we do have. Uh, if you're a physicist, for example, you collaborate with all the physicists across the world. You, when I started out, you had to do that with uh, writing a letter. And it was such a slow process. So I can't even quantify how quickly everything has, has sped up. Politics, I mean, with blogs, with online opinion sharing, let's put it that way. Um, the world is politically a much more dynamic place today. The, min the minute some event happens, it's politicized from all sides of the spectrum within 10 minutes via the internet. Do I like that? On balance, yes. Do I want that in my living room? On balance, yes, although it's pretty scary. If I trip and fall down off this stage, it's really not newsworthy. But if I were a politician, it would be known around the world in 10 minutes. That's a little too fast for me personally. By the way, what I'm going to say today is just my personal opinion. I'm not speaking for WISPA. I'm just speaking as, as myself. Online learning, I want this in my living room. I love it. If you tell me some new fact or mention a new person, in two, three minutes, I can know what that person's about. There's, there's nothing like that immediacy of knowing. In the past, growing up, I'd have to go to the library, search the card catalog by subject, try and find a book that relates to the question or the person. Go through the stacks. Is the book in the library? If it is, I can pull it down, go through the index, try and find the fact that I'm trying to learn about. Often the book's not in the library or it takes a long time and I end up not even learning what I'm seeking. So instant knowledge is very, uh, what? Exciting. I don't have to seek the book out anymore. All I need is the, the tablet or the laptop and broadband connectivity. 
mobile broadband. I've got a smartphone. Do I use it frequently for internet browsing? Not so much. My connectivity isn't very fast. It's not really very satisfying, but it's there when I need it. So I'm kind of a neophyte when it comes to mobile broadband. Fixed wireless broadband, of course, is what I do day in and day out. What WAPA does, what WISPA does, using unlicensed frequencies primarily in the U.S. 97% of the fixed wireless broadband in the U.S. is using unlicensed frequencies. And this slide is in here really kind of as a, uh, a second thought because I almost skipped right over what it is that I do. But this is really important, especially in areas where not everyone has broadband. And one of those areas is the United States because we, about 15% of our population has no broadband at home. No chance to have the fun and enjoy the benefits that we take for granted. That's 48 million people, by the way, with no broadband at home. Okay, let's see what this is about. Google is practically a constant companion for me during the day because people mention things that I don't really understand yet, but in three or five minutes I do understand it because of Google. It's a little bit frightening to have one organization being so dominant, but yet the value to me personally is so immense that I, I like them, I like what they're doing for me. And more and more also, Wikipedia, I'll, I'll turn to that to get a little more in-depth view of whatever it is I'm, I'm looking to understand. So I want Google in my living room, I want Wikipedia in my living room. Really, I, there's you know, pluses and minuses to what the internet is doing for us. For me, it's mostly plus, but there are some minuses too. You know, keeping in touch with family is a lot easier now. It's not just email, it's being able to send family tree information across. Uh, and I, I know people who have used the internet to research their whole family tree, their genealogy, to discover things about themselves, their family, their heritage, that they would probably never be able to discover in any other way. We do have a library in Salt Lake City, Utah. There's the Mormon Library. And you can go there and you can learn about your family tree, but most people don't have the opportunity to do that. Um, friendship. I don't know if you folks knew Calvin, Calvin and Hobbes. Uh, wonderful, wonderful comic strip in the U.S. for about 15 years. And then Bill Watterson one day retired and uh, we almost cried. So friends today, it's a little broader term than what it used to be. Friendship is what you make of it. Does the internet help? Of course. Do I want the internet to help me keep my friends close to my heart and in my living room? How many of you feel you've benefited from the internet helping you maintain and build your friendships? Just raise your hand. Okay, I see one, two. Of course, I'm teasing, I see many hands. Self-health. Um, Hank, do you, could I maybe have a sip of some water there, if, if at all possible, in the next minute? Okay, again, speaking for the U.S., about 45% of the adults in the U.S. today have no health insurance. So if you get sick, oh, thank you. If you get sick, it can be financial ruin, assuming you're in a good enough financial position to be ruined in the first place. So why is the internet in my living room for self-health? Because with all of the search capability, you can pretty much diagnose yourself and usually treat yourself. And basically these days, 
and I'm one of the adults in the U.S. with no health insurance for many years. You have to treat yourself. You have to stay healthy. You have to rely on yourself, basically. I don't know if I can cure cancer. I hope I never have to try. But the internet has made all of the difference in adding years to people's lives through the knowledge of how to remain healthy. Mapping function I use all the time. How do I get to point A that I've never been to before? I get on the internet and I instantly, uh, well, within a moment, I have a map that shows me the way. If you want to laugh, it's okay. If you don't, that's okay too. Telecommuting? Who, well, I bet, is there anyone in here who doesn't telecommute? Please raise your hand. No hands. It's great, isn't it? Not to mention what it does for the planet. What can I say about music via the internet that you don't already know? Thank you, internet gods, is what I can say. If any of you are in this room, and I imagine a number of you are, thank you. Um, in the U.S., we have traded our liberty for so-called security. Um, we now have 16 governmental agencies. You see, how, you see the title of this slide? We are now subjected to homeland scrutiny. Um, it serves one very important purpose. It does employ hundreds of thousands of people. Nobody knows how many. Nobody knows how big the budget is. Um, I don't want this in my living room. In fact, I work to maintain my privacy as much as possible. Use Facebook very little, only to look at pictures that my son posts. I don't post stuff of my own because I feel very threatened. The privacy that we used to have is basically gone. Pre-crime, prevention, I don't, for me, I don't feel any safer. I feel threatened. I don't want this in my living room, quite frankly. Um, sorry, it's a fact of life. The Internet does enable warfare. In fact, it was invented as a weapon of war to connect military agencies. Now, the joke is really on them because the benefits have been so immense on a personal level that uh, I think, and the human scale, we're, quote, winning the war against the military uses. But the jury is still out. In my own country, the jury is still out. It could tip either way. I'll, um, I hope it tips in the direction of peace myself because anything else will, has bankrupted my country already. Now, on a little more positive note, uh, we haven't downloaded any movies yet. As I said, I'm old-fashioned, but I expect we will soon. Going to the theater is still kind of a thrill. I want, I want to be able to watch, download and watch movies in my living room. Just haven't quite done it yet. However, when my car breaks, I can get advice, and it does work. I've several times successfully gotten on the internet and found out what to do to fix my car, because I can pull other people. And you see, it's working. It's great. I want this in my living room, not the car, the advice from others. Online banking. I love doing online banking at home. I want it in my living room. I don't have to go to the bank anymore and talk with the banker. In fact, it's great. Every day, three, four times. Let it stay in the living room. Um, this stuff, thankfully, I've not been a victim of fraud, and I hope I'm not, but I hear stories of people who are taken advantage of by those among us, not among us, but a few out there who would be, uh, treat others with uh, lack of respect and, and cheat them. 
of the natural world. I want this in my living room all the time. Um, I want to see what's out there. And that's one reason why I feel so happy to be here. Because after the convention, we're going out to uh, Polanisburg and we're going to see the, more of the natural world um, than we could see in any other way. Are there any birders in the audience, by the way? Any ornithologists? Anyone who likes to watch birds? Ah, isn't it, isn't it marvelous? We've got our cameras. We t we've taken, how many pictures of birds have you taken, B, since we got here? To 10 or 15 since we got here, just from the hotel. All of the birds here, except for one, are all new to us. They're all different than the species that we watch at home. The only one bird, and if it's here and we've got it, it must be everywhere around the world. Does anyone know what that bird is? A few of you know who watch birds probably, or maybe not. It's the English sparrow. It's everywhere. Every other bird here is brand new for us. Exotic destinations. See, we can be our own travel agent and plan our own trips. We can see where we want to go and do it ourselves. I want this in my living room. Okay, this is the last slide. Since 15%, 48 million people in my country have no broadband, and I know how much it means to me, to my life, I want everyone to have it. It's only fair. And this last point, this is in here, not specific to broadband or to internet, but since I live in what is, unfortunately, at this moment, a slowly collapsing economic society, because in the U.S. we have experienced a slow collapse for many years now. But what is making the difference? Okay, people have a choice. One, fight each other for the goods that are out there, become violent. Number two, what's actually happening in the U.S. right now is people are helping each other. People are helping each other more than at any time that I remember in my life. At the neighborhood level. And it's, this gives me great hope that we'll all remain around here to enjoy the internet, to keep helping each other, to keep learning, and to keep enjoying life. If, if there are any questions, now would be the time. But if there aren't, again, thank you for allowing me to be here with you this week. And if there are, Thank you, Jack. Much appreciated. Uh, just something oh, small from us to say. Thank, thank you. you. One last thought. Please stay in my living room. Okay? okay. Are there any questions uh, from the audience, from ornithologists like Hank? <laughs> Who can identify that bird? English sparrow. What? LBJ, we call them little brown jobs. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, Jack, I, I just want to c get a reality check. If you say 15% of Americans don't have internet, that's about 50 million people? About 48 million. 40, 48 million people. So Primarily as... rural. No gotcha. cable, no DSL, gotcha. no fiber, obviously. So it actually is a big problem, because I think I heard 15%. I was like, you're lucky. But, uh, I mean, that's... Uh, Fixed know, that's wireless broadband works for these people. Yeah. But usually they're so far out that it's very expensive to extend the backbone out to where you can put an access point. So they still remain, you know, they're getting service very slowly, but I mean, if they don't have broadband at home today, how long do they have to wait? You know, in three years, they're gonna be more than three years deprived of all the benefits that we're enjoying. And then I mean, maybe on that question, what is holding fixed wireless back from getting to these people rapidly? Is it the market? Is it the tech? Is it the FCC? Um, well, what are the big barriers? Well, in part the FCC because lack of unlicensed frequencies, but in greater part the lack of affordable backbone connectivity. Because if you have to, you can build a wireless point-to-point -point backbone for 100 miles from the nearest city where you can get upstream access affordably. But what if the terrain doesn't allow that? 
you've got to, you've got to buy expensive wired backhaul and out 50, 70 miles, it's horrendously expensive. It doesn't support the building of a broadband network out there. So that's what's holding it back. And mobile is no solution because the mobile companies don't care about that area either. There's not enough population. So we've got to get it out there. Jack, quick question from me. Um, since you're so active in the wireless side, would you say in domestic households, would there be a rough percentage or ratio between consumers that are wired versus wireless? The as, a, as a preferred method of accessing the, the internet? The, the vast majority are going to have wired access. And that is actually preferred because you can deliver much more bandwidth over wired infrastructure. Because of the limitations of only a few unlicensed frequencies being available, you can't really deliver a lot of bandwidth over wireless sure. to serve many people economically. But where there is no wired, affordable wired, then fixed wireless broadband is the next best thing. So it's more of an either or yes. situation. And percentage wise, would you have any idea how many households access fixed wireless versus fixed wired? Uh, I'd say fixed wired is probably 93%. As much as that. Mm -hmm. But we're generating maps of areas that are only served by fixed wireless broadband. And it's amazing how much color, how many areas are actually only served by fixed wireless broadband. Not a lot of people, but a large area. And it's, is it mostly rural? Yes. Okay. It's almost entirely rural. Thank you. Thanks for the questions. Thanks again. Thanks for letting me be here. Okay. Good to see you. Keep well.